in statistics, you know, you cannot see everything, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, like Igor Kokoshko said, it's like a bikini, you know, you see it a lot, but the most important parts you cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> My roles here and in the national team are like not really the same. In the national team, I'm just like coming in to, you know, be tough to <laughs> hit, <laughs> hit somebody. <laughs> a lot of uh, people say, how oh, you playing in Japan? They're all short. Yeah, but <laughs> foreign guys are not short. They're also big and fighting with me. So for me, that doesn't ma- change nothing. But do you see yourself as a coach? I don't know. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, <laughs> because sometimes uh, okay, I would not have like nerves to for some players. <laughs> Maybe I would just get mad too much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Ziga. Uh, big thanks for joining uh, my podcast. It's a great pleasure to host you and and it's a great pleasure to see you again in Poland. Uh, hello. Uh, nice to be here. I'm uh, like happy to be in your like podcast. So. Uh, I was wondering, uh, before you start, I said to you that uh, I wasn't expecting to interview you because I wasn't, wasn't expecting you to see you again in Poland and in Anvil. So what's happened that you decided to come back to Poland and to Anvil? I don't know, just like like during the season, like, you know, opportunity came, you know, so that uh, something, you know, changed, you know, like during the season, like my uh, with, uh, my old club, I was playing before that. So, yeah, I was looking for new, like new club and then Anvil show interest and I said, yeah, okay, I, I've been here. I, I like it here. No, it's very nice here. So, okay, that's made it. That's why. I... That's uh, many things changed since your first uh part in first stint in Anvil? Because there is the same coach, the same players, but I want to do you see a big difference? I, don't, I think it pretty much uh, it's a lot of things is still the same. I know <laughs> they're the same coaches, same coaching staff, same coach. The look is still here, except now he's like Polish, so <laughs> that's a little bit different. Here still uh, Boyo is here and uh, you know, a lot of guys are here and uh, I think, yeah. I think it's the same still. And when it comes to the league, because when you uh, was the first time here, uh, you said in a lot of interviews that this is a very physical league and uh, you didn't expect uh, that there is a high tolerance for a uh, contact, you said. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, do you, uh, after yeah, your experience in Turkey or in Japan, do you, not, uh, do you still confirm this? Yeah, it's a like tough league, but also I figured out that now in also in Turkey or in Japan there is also like a, a lot of like contact. So yes, but still like, here is like one of the most like you no know, physical game, and uh, I I got used to it. So yeah, I think it's gonna be great for me. When I was preparing for interview, the first thing when it comes to my mind when I look at your uh, birth town Italia is that this is a town known for uh, handball and football. But why you didn't land it in the football or handball and we see you now in the court, basketball court? Yeah, I tell you, it's like known for uh, mostly from handball yeah, and also like uh, football. They have like basketball, but in second league, but uh, I didn't actually, I play basketball in uh, Lashko, so it's known by basketball. Uh, I, I live like 30 minutes away from the city, so I don't know, it just like came up. I was like, but actually I was playing volleyball before I started basketball, so. <laughs> And does uh, volleyball is and volleyball and ski jumping in Slovenia is really as popular as we in Poland expect? Because in Poland uh, you have a success in volleyball in uh, in ski jumping, and there's also in uh, the same thing in Slovenia. And, and I'm wondering, is it really a popular sport there when it comes to the TV cover, the the, the media visibility? Uh, yeah, like the most popular, like. During the winter, it's of course like ski jumping and skiing in Slovenia and also like other sports, but the most covered are like, you know, winter sports like ski jumping, like during the winter now and skiing, it's like covered. But uh, during like uh, national team uh, games, they're covering everything. So also like volleyball, but it, when they're playing uh, like domestic leagues, they don't cover like really much about volleyball and stuff like that. So uh, is Andrzej Laniszek or uh, Rok Mozic, Klement Szebuj more popular than Ziga Dimet? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a top player, so yeah, probably, I don't know. <laughs> and when I was uh, interviewing uh, some uh, guys from Slovenia, like uh, Bosian Nachbar, like uh, your coach, Aleksander Sekulic, I was always wondering, and also the volleyball guys, uh, like Mozic, Cebuj, I was always thinking, why this such a small country produce so many athletes in so many sports? It's like two million people? 
Uh, yeah. yeah, two million people. And yeah. uh, you know, when we think, I mean, rock glitch and cycling and skiing and uh, in the football, two great uh, goalkeepers, uh, Oblak and Danovic, and uh, always like, okay, in uh, basketball, we always losing to Slovenia. Then we always, now we losing in ski jumping. Uh, there was a time when we were losing to the uh, in volleyball, so we were thinking. Why this such, such a small country kick our ass? And uh, when you think about it, what is the reason that you produce so much talent? Oh, I don't know. I don't even. I don't. I don't think anyone in Slovenia know why. But you know, I don't know this was just. I you know. I don't actually know. But when we were young, we just don't go there, practice a lot. You know, make sacrifices, and then you know. I don't know, maybe because it's so few people, so yeah, you have a couple of uh, you know, players or guys that are doing some sports, so you maybe more focus on them and to develop those players, you know. Bokin Akbar said uh, that it's hard to find somebody in Slovenia that sitting in us and watching TV, that everybody lost activity. Yeah, but like, like also like me during uh, off days or when during summer, I like to go uh, to hike, you know, to the mountains, to hike and go around. I don't want to be like home, especially if it's like sunny day or also like going with kids, you know, to playground to do something and play with them. So maybe that's why also. Yeah. And are you able to completely reset from basketball during like off season? Yeah, I usually do like for at least like when I'm going to the vacation to the seaside or something yeah I don't want to think about basketball because I'm doing basketball like uh, for during the season and after seasons are also like a lot of like European championship uh, like now this year is like vacation for Olympic games Olympi games and World Cup so all summer you're actually also like working not resting so those like one week two weeks when you get off I don't like to think about basketball just to reset my mind a little bit <laughs> and do you like watch uh, basketball on TV? Uh, I do like I like to watch like my ex teams how they doing you know even uh, like Slovenian teams especially I like to watch them but otherwise not really. And when it comes okay you said that you don't know why you produce so much athletes but when when it comes to the basketball what is the main focus the coach uh, train focus when you, when they are training uh, young kids in Slovenia because up to like. Uh, I see the trend that many Slovenian players like stay in the country till 15, 16 years old and then move to, for example, to Spain or to Italy. Uh, also, also Bokin Akbar said this, that this is trend. And I'm wondering why you produce so much basketball players despite not having a good uh, league. Because, okay, in Slovenia we have uh, CDT Vita Olympia and uh, that plays in Eurocup. But, you know, many years ago, I also remember Kaka played in uh, Euroleague. There was a more uh, stronger teams. And right now, a part of uh, CDT Vita, Olympia, the Slovenian teams cannot compare like to the, I don't know, maybe even to Polish teams. Yeah, Slovenia is just like uh, CDT Olympia. It's like yeah, the highest level. And then it's like Kirka still, but they're not playing like, they're playing Adriatic League and Slovenian League. So it's not the same anymore. I don't know why, but yeah, but I don't know. How is it possible? But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. Maybe, if, yeah, if maybe because young guys are leaving, you know, to go try to be like Luca. You know, Luca went with I don't know, 14 something like that to Spain. So they're trying to do you know best maybe because, and then you know when they make it made it out there, they just don't come back. You know, because also in Slovenia there's not basically there's, there's not like good money in the league. So maybe that's that that's that that's why they're not coming back. You know, probably. So in your opinion, it's possible today to stay uh, throughout the teenage years in Slovenia, start playing in senior level in Slovenia and still make a good European career or the young players should go early, leave the, the, the Slovenia early? It depends, you know, uh, we have one truth, but yeah, it's maybe it's a little bit harder because, you know, you need to go to some good team in Slovenia and it's like only Olympia and <coughs> Then uh, if you're like coming from Slovenia, it's not maybe you're not getting chance. You're not gonna play. So again, you're not gonna no one gonna see you. No, so it's will hard to go out uh, again. Or you know if you go to Kirka, you need to you play Adriatic League and then uh, you need to play there good to go some other club in uh, the region uh, region and from there and from there you to go like outside maybe. You spent your teenage years in Slovenia and you also during that time played in uh, junior national teams. And I'm wondering how you remember this transition from the junior to senior level. It was easy for you to start playing against adult senior players? 
uh, not actually it's like it was a bit harder for me I was like uh, like how, I was like 18 years old when I go into like senior team and you know I was like a little bit skinny uh, <laughs> playing on five <laughs> fighting under the you know <laughs> old guys older guys <laughs> let's say uh, more physical than me but yeah it's just like at the beginning it's always difficult maybe for me, it was a little bit difficult, but you get used to it, you get stronger, you get used to everything, and then you become like normal and, you know, easy, if, and if it become easier, then you can go. <laughs> and do you remember like the breakout moment, the one season that you took, uh, make a big step when it comes to your form or your physicality, when you started feeling like really like a senior player? Uh, yeah, that was like when I was like, I think, 21, 22. Uh, when I played for the Rogaška, there's like small uh, town in Slovenia, but known for like uh, their spas and everything. And we played. Uh, I played there f uh, for my coach, uh, f uh, which had me for like when I was playing under 20 years in the uh, national team uh, for the younger team. And he uh, wanted me there. You know, he uh, he said he give me chance and everything. So I went there, and we came to the finals of Slovenia national league. So it's like big deal for the club and for me. And then I, from that, I uh, like went to like Kirka and from Kirka, you know, developed. And do you agree? Because when I look at your style of playing, that you are a old school type of center because you see now the trend that comes from NBA that the center should uh, should think free. And like uh, I look at your stats, there's blank space when it comes to the three pointers. Like you didn't score for distance, and now is the trend that the center like or should be a, like Jokic or like Anthony Towns. And you like the old school type who, who likes to setting screens, uh, contact uh, under the rim, etc. What are your thoughts? Yeah, maybe I'm literally <laughs> still like maybe I was born like 10 years too late yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. my style of playing but still you know still need a strong uh, guy under the basket who will make screen that other guys will be open sacrifice uh, myself you know my body for good of the team and you know you cannot have like more than one Jokic in uh, the world so <laughs> it's hard to compare uh, with Jokic is one of the kind <laughs> but yeah I think I'm like doing what I'm the best, you know, making screen, uh, fighting under basket, making shots under half decent. I can shoot for three, I did it, but you know, not my like top quality. So I'm not like, we have guys that shooting threes and the guys for you know, fighting and doing other things. And do you think maybe your work is sometimes underappreciated because there is no statistic like uh, screens per game? Yeah, of course, that's like <laughs> main problem because in, in statistic, you know, you cannot see everything, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, like Igor Kokoshko said, it's like a bikini, you know, <laughs> you see it a lot, but the most important parts you cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't like worry about this because, yeah, that you didn't great, you didn't have like a stats like i don't know 15 points 15 rebounds per game etc like always like when we're looking at your stats and looking at your game it's like two separate things when somebody if somebody doesn't see you in the game and see, looking at the stats it's much different player when we see you on the court yeah of course i think like the dirty work or how they say you know? yeah like, yeah you don't see it but you know coaches see it and the people they know about basketball they see it and you know they appreciate it also that's why i'm like also here and being fine and, and then also when I get a chance I take my chance to score and do the stuff that is shown on the statistic. <laughs> and how you remember your move outside uh, Slovenia first time to Germany for a sort of while and later to uh, Lithuania? Yes, uh, it's actually a good experience. I like Germany there but you know I was just only, only there for like a couple of months because the uh, other big guy was injured so they just uh, I was just feeling up for him but after that it's like Right away, I get the offer from Lithuania to for Litkabelis, and it was also like ni nice experience. Also, Lithuania, so like if basketball there is very popular, and you know it was good for the, uh, there. Like, but yeah, I like I liked it there. You know, it's it was nice. Also, like here, like cold, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of snow and you know, <laughs> gray winters. <laughs> and when it, when we're talking about national team, because you move through this all the steps, like uh, in the under 16, 18, 20, so you were considered as a uh, quite a prospect, good prospect. And when you uh, finally <laughs> laughing, uh, when you finally uh, receive a call up for the first team, it was when Kokoshkov was a coach. Yeah, yes. 2016. Yes, for the uh, qualification for. Uh, yeah, uh, how you feel and how you remember like the first trainings? Do you feel like the pressure, stress that you played with some, you know, 
great names. Yeah, I, was, yeah, okay. I remember still like when he called me, you know, to just to check on me and how I'm doing and let me know that I'm in the roster. I was like really like happy, I met, you know, because when you're like young, you always want to, you're always dreaming to play for the national team, you know, it's like a big, big, big accomplishment for you. And I don't know, I still remember like first practice, you know, I was like fighting with uh, Gapi, you know, Widmar, he's like, was like strong guy, you know, experience. I like him very much, we're still like talking to, to each other, but yeah, it's nice. I didn't know what to expect, uh, so, but it was nice, yeah, different than, you know, before. <laughs> and when are we talking about... Uh Uh, actually, my first call was uh, for the national team. I was like, when I was uh, practicing with national team was one year before when the, I think Judas Dodd was still the coach. But uh. I was like, uh, I came. I didn't uh, made it to the final 12. I was like the last one who like, <laughs> cut off, was cut off. So. <laughs> And it's oh, interesting that you made uh, you mentioned Dodd because I look at the you know the the history of the results of the Slovenian team and. There was like the generation of Dovs, then there was a uh, Gorenz, uh, the later was a uh, Bostian uh, Nachbar, Erasm Lobrek, Jakalakovic, etc. Then they moved to the uh, Dragic, now to Doncic. And I think uh, really it was at some moment it was uh, maybe the good luck of generation or what happened that the Slovenian national team started making uh, good results because it was 2009, there was a fourth place. I remember Lobrek played a good tournament there. And uh, later it started, you know, and from Kokoshkov, you are now considered as a top team in the world. Yeah, it's true. Like we had also like, had like a good basketball players, you know, a lot of them were playing on the high level, NBA, EuroLeague, you know, so. But also like, always we were missing like a little bit to become a like, little bit, you know, to come to the, you know, more one step like we did it in 217 I don't know why but yeah maybe with Kokoshko mentality or something changed and uh, we start to play maybe a little bit different think a little bit different and you know now no things are I think good <laughs> and how Kokoshko was as a coach uh, I know he was I don't know he's long a time ago but you know he, <laughs> he's a good coach he was like very like you know strict like he wants to have the things done and he was very like I don't know How to say, I think good coach, you know, like <laughs> we started like slowly, you know, everything and then he built up and he yeah, make you, you know, he was good also like, uh, like mentally preparing you for the games and everything and uh, just to, he was trying to get the best out of you. So, yeah, and also in the, he like uh, did on the games, you know, he played the players that he thought that would be best fit for the, you know, be the next team. It didn't matter who was it, just, you know, like he didn't care about the name, but just the player and his quality and what he can do to make it better. And were you surprised when he was, he became a first uh, European uh, coach in NBA, head coach? No, basically when you, you know, work hard and you follow your dream, you know, it's not surprising, you know. And so when you're now looking at that tournament, uh, what was the, your the keys to, to success? In 2017, uh, we know who are the, back then. The Goran was our like main guy, the leader, and everybody were like following him. And uh, also, we played like as a team, and uh, we didn't care about you know the stats, who will score, how much, who will do. Just you know, do your job the best you can, and help the team to be the best. So I think that was the like one of the main reasons. And it's do you see a difference when it comes to the approach to the volleyball uh, to basketball and to like the games be uh, when it comes to the players from Europe and from NBA because you know there is like a stereotype that these guys from NBA like is like the stars who just you know coming only in the summer do they you know few games and uh, bring all the attention but uh, during like the season. The European guys doing a main job because they coming to the, for example, the uh, windows of the qualification. And what about the uh, Slovenia teams? Uh, do you see a difference between yeah the NBA players and non-NBA players when it comes to uh, work in the group? Of course, there's more attention on the NBA players, but you know, like our NBA players, you know, Luca, Chanchar, they're like very normal guys. You know, they don't seek for attention or something. They're just like normal. They want to just to hang out with us and. Not be normal, but yeah, like during few of windows they cannot come to play. But also for Slovenia, this is like difficult because Slovenia don't have a, much, a lot of players to choose from. So every player that doesn't come for the FIBA window, it's like 
difficult for you know to get a win and for Slovenia it was much better that we play like location everything during the summer when, yes when yes everyone can come and that's it yes maybe I don't uh, I always wondering about Polish team because now we have only one player in, in NBA Sohan but in recent years uh, he doesn't play and uh, Igor Milicic use only the players from Europe and I was wondering if this may be an advantage to a Polish team because almost every player uh, was at the you know the during the season windows yeah for sure it's gonna be better especially in the field break, break you have like just a couple of days to for practice and then you have games so it's easier if the players already know each other and they can play and know how, what to expect from each other it's a lot easier for its advantage yeah. and also for the also for the when it comes to the summer it's also they know each other already so it's easier for the you know beginning of the part uh, for the preseason and also for the games you know you also just like one month and then you have to go play when I was preparing for interview first like my uh First, first task, first thing I told to myself is uh, to not ask you about Luka Doncic, because I know that you are asked uh, so much about how he was. But uh, I have a quote. Uh, I remember a quote when I spoke with Coach Sekulic, and I always we were thinking about you know we we're talking about Luka obviously, and uh, he said that uh, the biggest challenge is not to use Luka. 100% of his potential, but is uh, for him is uh, biggest challenge is to make other players play as a similar level as him because no matter how great shape he Luka is, no matter how good he played, he doesn't uh, win a game single solo. And uh, also uh, the second thing he said that uh, there's advantage about Luka that he came to this team when he wasn't a star. That he because he was a junior, uh, Sekulic knows him from the na junior national teams. And do you agree with that? That there is like maybe that's the reason that you have a humble team, humble players because there is no star because all these players started playing in national team before they became famous. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I agree with him. You know, look how he came when he was like for the senior team when he was like seventeen, yeah, yeah. something like that. So he was still like in the development and also. The guys are we playing uh, now in the national team? We played against each other when we were like younger to the ocean yeah. and played together in the younger way, uh, days. So we know each other from then and from there back there. So it's yeah, maybe that's why we are more like maybe more connected or something. You know, we know each other like very well. You know, spending every summer and during the season t together. So yeah, maybe that's why. And what changed in national team since uh, Sekulic came? Like change. Probably not much, you know. It's still like the same, you know. But just like now, it's not more. Uh, now it's not uh, Goran the star. Now it's uh, like first player. <laughs> now it's Luca, and uh, we're helping Luca to that he play well and that we play well that we can win, you know, as a team. But as the Olympics, Edo Muric was the captain. I was always. I have uh, friends who who their knowledge about Slovenia basketball is only uh, Dragic and Doncic, and he was asking me who this guy is uh, captain of the team because they know they don't know Edo Muric. Even in, he played in Poland for a few months in 2018. But uh, I was. Uh, does really uh, Muric has like the captain? Attributes. Or? Yeah, he's like very like guy. He want to you know he's good with everyone. You know he's I think he played the most games in national team almost. So yeah, it kind of makes sense. You know he's like also like one of the oldest guy. Played the most games, everything. So yeah, and also like a, a bit like he lo loves to speak. So <laughs> as a captain, you know to make team together when the times are tough. So yeah. And how you remember this? Uh, you, how you remember this 2021 season when you fighting, for example, against Poland for a, a qualification spot? And later there was this great tournament. Uh, what was like the, your biggest weapon, biggest thing that makes you through these all phases into the top four of the Olympic tournament? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I don't no. know, like every game, uh, some other guy was like hot, or we just using that like in, uh, in, against Lithuania. I think Blažić was hot; he was making threes, so we were fighting him. And then Luka also, like yeah, he was also hot. So and also like fighting. Uh, I remember that one time he, the, I was like out, and the Toby was out, and then Edo uh, was fighting with uh, uh, Valenčunas under the basket, you know, and you know everybody were fighting. They, we didn't we. We all believed, you know, we, we, we will do it, we, and we like stick to the plan, game plan, and 
everybody were fighting, you know, doesn't matter. I don't score, just my guy will not score, he will not get rebound, and that was it. Does your responsibilities on the court change uh, between uh, club and the national team? Do you think you have other different tasks to do on the court when you're playing for the national team that when you're playing for the club? Yes, uh, my roles here and in the national team are like not really the same. In the national team, I'm just like coming in to, you know, be tough to <laughs> hit, <laughs> hit somebody, <laughs> make, make uh, not good, you know, like, yeah, like skin, but to rest Toby a little bit and to make the, you know, if somebody is like hitting uh, Luca to hit him back, <laughs> that's a stop or something like that. But, you know, I, I accept my role, you know, to fight on the basket, to lock up the paint and that's it, you know, I accept my role and. So, so you are a bodyguard? Like that, yeah, so, <laughs> in some way. <laughs> and it's interesting that you mentioned Toby because uh, Slovenia is one of the uh, rare teams in the world, top teams in the world that use this spot for uh, foreigner players for uh, a center. Because Randolph or Toby, they're with centers. When you look, for example, the most national teams, they use this spot for the guards. Like, for example, in Poland, we use for AJ Slaughter. Uh, Spain used this spot for Lorenzo Brown, etc. There was like in Georgia, in uh, Bulgaria, Bost, etc., etc. And uh, when I spoke about this with uh, Sekulic, first of all, he is, he isn't a fan of this uh, giving uh, this one spot, but he said it's like playing poker when rivals has one more card. But when I asked him why he, he used this spot for a center, he said because uh, in Slovenia is a lack of physical big strong players. And what when I think when I speak with you, the center, the guy that is uh, playing at the same position as them. Are you a little bit uh, worried that, okay, I have to play at the same position as a naturalized player? Because in theory, when they signing this player, they don't signing to be a, a rotation player, signing to be a starter. Yeah, no. In Slovenia, there's a lack of the big guys, you know, so like, we don't have like, many options, but then you, on the point guard, you have Luka, so, <laughs> and we have a lot of guards, so it doesn't make sense to not yeah. use a guard, so. If I'm only like one of the rare big guys, you know, it's, it's going to be like tougher for a national team to like get some good results. So it makes sense to bring a big guy also if you don't play as much as you would, but still, you know, still you want to, then at the end it doesn't matter if you play a lot of not, if you like won some medals, you go to Olympics, you know, it's, that's what on, on the end will you no. Know. So you are able to put a little bit of your uh, ambitions, to your minutes of the court, sacrifice this uh, minutes for a medal yes of course it's like yeah it's basically you know you have to do what's the best for the team it's like okay i'm gonna play less and that someone else gonna play maybe and he got good games you know so be it no and how this naturalized player adapt to the teams is it like do you see a big difference okay they are living they own their own way because they're not speaking uh, your language. Uh, no, but if we we accepted him, which is like he's one of us. When he's like around, we speak English, so it's not a problem. And also he's like learning a little bit Slovenian all the time. So and so long he's speaking Serbian, so he will like learn a little bit Serbian, so <laughs> it will be easier for him to to understand us. I have to ask you about uh, 2022 and this game against Poland, because I, I must confess, I remember very losses against uh, Slovenia, but this one win in the quarterfinals is my, one of the you know most amazing games of Polish national team I watched in my life. And uh, when, I think, uh, when I think about these games, I still have goose, goosebumps. And uh, when you think about this game, I know, know that you are not <laughs> happy about this, but uh, there was even some rumors that maybe don't teach party day before and uh, uh, when you were thinking about this game, what was how you remember? First yeah, of all, how you remember this game? I remember, okay, you no, know, it's like first quarterfinals, you know, just one game. We had like our uh, we didn't play our best game, you know, didn't uh, start it good, and you know that's maybe when Paul got hot, it's easier, and it's also like you know it could happen. It's like have a bad day, maybe out of next three games we would won, but you know it's just one game that is important and. Poland played like a really good game uh, that day and they were better at the, the moment, so they deserve to win. And uh, you were surprised how good Poland played at this tournament? Because even in Poland, no, man, not many people expected such a good result. But uh, when people don't expect you know, someone to do good or they like, 
you know, they're just like, let's say, uh, thinking, okay, they're not so good enough to be, you know, that, that's when the teams usually surprise everybody, you know, okay, we will show them to, that, yes, we can do better, we're practicing all day, every day, so we will show them that we can do, and they did it, so they deserve it. And uh, do you remember uh, the time when you signed for the first time in Wrocławek, the circumstances of your move f to Poland? How you how uh, what happened? Yeah, how this move to Poland came uh, to the fruition? Yeah, I was playing uh, in uh, Olympia back yeah. then. So, but I didn't play as much as I wanted to play. So I was start to looking for other options you know, that I could play to show myself that I can do it. And then, yeah, I came here and I showed I can. <laughs> and what you know? What you knew about uh, Poland and Polish league back then? I just for the start, I just know it's gonna be tough. You know, they're gonna play physical, and yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> all that I knew. <laughs> so you didn't? I didn't know uh, like much, but I was like looking uh, like forward to like okay, new experience, new chapter, and yeah. So you didn't talk ab about this move to anybody from Slovenia? You didn't contact anybody? No, I, mm -hmm. I was just like looking what was uh, the moment best option for me. I was not okay. I don't care what uh, anyone else is going to say, okay, maybe point is that, no. I need to go, I need to play, I need to show, my, uh, show myself that I can, because the last uh, season I didn't play as much as I, I wanted to, so if I'm going to have like, my career to go up, I need to change something, and I did. But there is a lot of Slovenian players in history, in, in Polish league. I, I, uh, at, I was uh, doing research at night and I was like researching all the players and even in Anvil there was a yeah, and also coaches, 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 yeah, Urlep, Aleš Pipan, who is like respected very well in uh, Slovenia. There's also uh, Goran Jagodnik, there's also uh, Stipe Modric, uh, one of the Zagorac brothers. Uh, no. Sasha probably. Sasha, oh yeah. no, Sasha. Uh, Sasha, the Sasha uh, played in Trev. Yeah. Yes, uh, there was like many, many uh, players from Slovenia, and uh, now do do you remember how you adapt? It was easy for you to adapt, like to, yeah, to Polish league, to living in Poland in Wrocław, because it's also a very inter interesting thing because you have family, you have two kids, so uh, I suppose it, it's not easy to like move from one country to another with uh, two kids. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the adaptation for me is like not like hard because you no, know, it's <laughs> still in Europe, you know, still like similar to our country, everything. So. Except, okay, better, it's a bit different. <laughs> but otherwise, it, no, it's the same. But yeah, my, my kids actually are now, right now, in Slovenia because uh, for school, uh, the oldest is going to school. So uh, they, did, well, they when I was in Turkey, they uh, weren't with me either because they were no, there was no like international school. So we didn't want to put him in like Turkish school to, he need to learn Turkish and everything. So <laughs> we didn't want to complicate his life <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> So because of that, it's like easier for me to just move by myself, but it's tough because I'm, I'm not with them, you know, right now. And, uh, so you're, you are now here alone? Yeah, but they will come to they come to visit or when I have like time, I go home. But in between time, it's, it's a little bit tougher, you know, but uh, at least we have like those, you know, video calls and everything. So it's a little bit, you know. And they were with you in Japan? Yeah, but they were with me uh, over there. There was like... They love it here. They uh, they like it over there. They was like very nice, you know, international school, everything very like organized, everything. So, and it was easy for you to yeah to play play and live in Japan because it's such a different uh, culture actually than. Actually, it was like for the first like month or some. So it's like a little bit strange, you know, but it's also like different world, different culture. Like let's say different world. It's different culture, so we need like one month or something like to adapt to get used to it to, for their like traditions, everything. What their doing you know it's but after a while when you get used to it it's yeah it's nice and maybe you know someday we we'll go again <laughs> and it's uh how would you describe the japanese basketball because i know uh, many stories about japanese volleyball japanese volleyball league because but uh, i don't know i never spoke with anybody who played in japan uh, in the basketball so i'm wondering because i i heard the stories from volleyball players about this Diff, tough, uh, weird uh, 
trainings that they were training for like few hours and uh, they the, the Japanese player didn't 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 want to stop a training etc there was like the this work ethic and uh, when you think yeah, when you think about your time in Japan what was like the what you remember about the basketball their basketball I don't it's a lot of depends on the coach who's the culture we had like a, some Japanese coach and it was like I don't know, it's different tactic, you know, because in Japan they're not like, they don't know about tactic as much as we do here. <laughs> so it's a little bit different and also uh, every, you know, they, they call it import guy, it's a uh, big guy, you know, so actually I'm, <laughs> I was like fighting under basket with <laughs> some other who's like uh, same as me <laughs> over there. So I, a lot of uh, people say, how oh, you playing in Japan? They're all short. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> foreign guys are not short. They're also big and <laughs> fighting with me. So for me, that's ma- change nothing. Like I'm playing here or there, you know, for me it was the same. But yeah, it's you have like two games, like Saturday, Sunday, and then sometimes also Wednesday, so like Saturday, Sunday and Wednesday games. So it's lot of games to play more than 60 games and uh, yeah but our practice were not that hard it was like more like normal practice not like you described so <laughs> then that <laughs> but is it uh, true that for example in Japan when you are an imported players you earn a good money but they expect much more from you that from the domestic players yeah of course they they bring you there to make the team better and uh, you need to sh- uh, give them that you know but the the most they see it's points you know and they don't they a lot of time they don't see you know the work you, uh, like i put in you know to make that some other guy to score you know but you know we were getting there you know, i was there like yeah i had like good uh, good season over there and also like uh, they liked me there you know they don't also like you know that you're like not like showing off something and just to be like normal guy to so and so support them, teach them something and that's it. And I wondered how your wife uh, re- reacted like to this lifestyle because it's lifestyle of the basketball players. You, you as a player, you know, you have training, you have uh, travel to games, you are not rarely at home. Even like ho- even home, I mean, even here. Uh, and uh, she has to like, yeah, raise the kids etc etc and do you even yeah how hard is for you to combine yeah being a professional player to stay you know professional to uh, be the best version of basketball player of yourself you can be and with being a good husband and good uh, father to kids ah, it's difficult you know especially now when we're like apart but yeah now it's more the most work uh, for my family, it's doing my wife, you know. So she's in the morning. She need to put, uh, take kids to school, kindergarten, and then she got her own work to do. So then in between, the, she's doing her own work, and after that, you know, she need to pick them up uh, if they're going to some, you know, activities after school or something. She take them there, and yeah, it's a lot of on her plate, but some sacrifices she needs to do for a couple of years and when I stop playing, you know, it will be my turn. <laughs> and do you have a plan what you would like to do after uh, retirement? Uh, no, I don't, I haven't think about that. So <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping that I have, I have like a couple of more years, like at least five years until I start thinking about that, so. But do you see yourself as a coach? I don't know. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, <laughs> because sometimes uh, okay, I would not have like nerves to for some players. <laughs> Maybe I would just get mad <laughs> too much. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because when I spoke with players, uh, many times they said active players, even at the top level, that they don't want to be a coach because it's like living the same life as a player because you're also always traveling uh, distance from home. But you can be uh, fired much quickly because you know it's easier to uh, fire a coach than to fire yeah. you know twelve players. And so they, and uh, when you are player, you only are responsible for yourself. And when you are a coach, you are responsible for uh, twelve players or tw- fourteen players. I think, what do you think about this? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, when you coach, you have like responsibility for whole team. And if you start to losing games, the first uh, on the line is you. So <laughs> this was not a fun thing. <laughs> And when you talk about Anvil, uh, once again, uh, how would you describe uh, Coach Fasonkevich for uh, like people who doesn't 
who doesn't know him or who doesn't follow, follow uh, Anvil? Hmm, I'll describe him. He's like doing a very good job now. He's here like for like 30 years now, so he's doing something right. And he's also like good with the players. You give you like freedom during. He well, he's he's got his own system, but in the system you got like with your freedom what you can do. And he just want uh, from every player to do the, his role in the team, but he's doing the best, and that's it. And also he's with also the, during the practices, you know, with doing the things we do, we, we are going to do in the game, no, not some like weird stuff that uh, some coaches are doing, you know, to run some more than need to be or do some crazy drills. Just like normal, like human coach. <laughs> But sometimes when we watch him on the press conference or during the games, he seems like the cold guy. But how he is like uh, behind the cameras during uh, during the practice or after practice? Yeah, I don't know. When I was like first coming here, also like when so photo or something, I was like, okay, maybe. But then when you <laughs> get to know him, you know, it's like no, really, he's opposite of that. So it's like really nice, fun guy. You know, everything. You know. And I know that he's uh, focusing a lot of defense. That he, uh, this is one of the, his key key things that he likes to yeah, play defense uh, a lot. And uh, how you f how you feel in his style? Do you like his uh, way of coaching? His philosophy of coaching? Yeah, a lot of coaches I was working before also like was focusing on defense. You know, because if you not. You know, you have bad day in offense. You still can play defense. You know, you cannot have like bad day in defense. You know, it's just like your will and you know that you follow the rules and that's it. You know. In the football, I heard the quote that uh, uh, the the, the uh, offense, the the strikers brings you uh, fans, brings you uh, tickets, and the defense brings you uh, titles. Yeah, some yeah. If defense doesn't get a goal, you know, and uh, those strikers score like one goal, it's enough, you know. But if Strikers score like one goal and you still receive two goals, it doesn't matter. And how you feel, because for example, yeah, I think Kamil Wojcinski, we played before with Kamil Wojcinski, yes. of with Luke Petrasek. Yes. And uh, how important for you and how easy or hard for you is to make a good connection with the point guard. Because when we see at, we talk at the beginning about your style of playing, that you are setting a lot of screens for them. Uh, so that requires a good connection between the center and the point guard. And uh, is it easy for you to like make this uh, big chemistry in, on the court with the players? You know, you, okay, maybe the beginning was a little bit different, uh, difficult for because it was, it was like first time when you started. But not now, it's like you know, you get used to it. And uh, also, uh, Kamil, I already know him now, so for me it's a lot easier. And uh, we also already uh, done like a good job. Uh, Cooperating and now I think it's gonna be the same and he will come back. I hope so. <laughs> and what is your like general opinion about Polish league? And actually, it's a Polish league. It's like a good league, good league, like very tough, good. Uh, I don't know. You have like uh, team that play uh, competing in Euro Cup. You have uh, Champions League, FIBA Euro Cup. And we like one last year FIBA Euro Cup. Yeah. So you know, it's like good league, you know, because also good teams are competing in Europe. So. But you know, when we talk about, uh, for example, yeah, Euro Cup, we have like Śląsk Wrocław, but this struggle another season, like they have like one win per uh, season, two wins per season. One, they got advanced into the, the next phase, but it was because the Kasnodar was uh, cut because of the war. But uh, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, uh, uh, like the, there was, a, for example, Sopot, Gdynia teams that played in Uh, Euroleague or Zgorzelec, Zielona Góra, back to back in Euroleague. Now, uh, when you have like this closed Euroleague, for me, uh, it's sometimes a little bit uh, tough to watch. Yeah, this all the teams like from Lithuania, Alba Berlin playing in Euroleague, and we cannot compare uh, to Euro Cup. Do, in your opinion, it's only about the money in that case that we cannot compare to like in Euro Cup or the even in Champions League Polish clubs cannot go through the group phase. I don't know, it's hard to say, but also uh, this year's Olympia it's also struggling in Europe. Yeah. Cup, you know, but yeah. When I was there we didn't we were like in the spot for the we were like in quarter final. So I don't know, it changed, you know, it can be you know sometimes yeah, it's difficult, you know, especially if it's like you're going from year to year. <laughs> it's hard to watch but 
I don't know why, maybe, I don't know why, but because you have teams that have like less money and still like do like good result. I don't know why, but maybe. But uh, in your opinion, Olympia could fight in Poland for a championship? Uh, yeah, you have, have enough Polish guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think they, yeah. they could, yeah, for sure. And the other teams like Krka or Donjale or uh, uh, maybe Kirka would still like be in, inside, but that and I don't think the other teams gonna be like able. Also, Kirka will be struggling also because they're not used to us to play as physical. Because okay, they have more like I don't know light guys. <laughs> so like the uh, Slovenian league has a different style of playing. Yeah, a little bit different. Yeah, also it's less teams than here. So and also they maybe some players are like maybe. I don't, know, I don't know, not so experienced yet, and maybe that's why. And do you remember, like, do you have one name in your mind of Polish player that, uh, from other teams, uh, that, like, I don't want to be hard, but, for example, kick your ass or, like, gives you a, a strong, uh, tough rivality? Do you have, like, one rival that, oh, I have to play another time against him? That, Really, really, you don't like uh, playing against him because he is a tough player. Oh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> actually. I don't remember <laughs> if I have some. No, no, I don't think so right now. Uh, nothing comes, comes to the, my mind, so I don't know. <laughs> and uh, when you could talk about general Polish players and uh, national team or league. The, the the best player that comes to your mind in your, in your opinion. The best Polish. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Kamil Wonczyński, of course. Kamil, but. yes, of course. <laughs> Shimon, but he's retired now. Yes. So. <laughs> but uh, I thought you may say Ponitka. Ponitka. Yeah. Or uh, Balcerowski. Now we have in uh, in Panathinaikos, uh, good guy. But you don't, don't you don't know him? Yeah, I know him. Uh, uh, I play, we play. I played against him. He was playing also a short time uh, in uh, mega mega, mega event, basket. Yeah. Yeah. So I played against him there, and he also played in national team. Uh, yeah. Very uh, much like in. The, yeah, he played in the national team also. He playing, so yeah, yeah, in he your basket. I think. Yeah, yes, basket yes. And do you think you reach your prime? Or maybe you are after your prime or before your prime? Because uh, you are 31, we will be this year 31. Will be, will be, so I have still have a lot of time to be 31. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I don't think I've reached my prime yet. I think I'm going to be in my prime now. Maybe I'll just like develop it a bit later, you know, because I, I hope so, no. <laughs> I need to hope like that. <laughs> But do you see a big uh, improvement if you're, uh, in your game from like when you compare to yourself from five, three years? Yeah, of course. It's like different game now. Uh, maybe I think different. I don't, you know, especially like during my uh, beginnings, I was also like doing a lot of like offense fouls in the, maybe on screen. Maybe now I'm doing less of that stuff and. Maybe I, I know the game a little bit more now, and maybe I don't like hurry so much and making you now maybe better decisions than I used to do. So. And I wondering uh, because you said uh, before that you watching games, but you watching uh, games of your former teams. Actually, Slo basically most of the Slovenian teams, and and when the EuroLeague comes to the finals, I watch those. But before that, yeah. I don't like to bring work to home. Yeah, that's my uh, that, <laughs> that's my question. That uh, you prefer EuroLeague or uh, NBA? Of course, EuroLeague or European any European <laughs> league in the NBA. I don't know why I just cannot watch NBA. Because <laughs> yeah, I had uh, many coaches said to me that uh, I don't know if you heard about Gunder Svetra. He was the first Latvian in NBA. Uh, he played in CSKA for many years. He was a coach in Poland in, uh, of uh, women team, and he said that uh, he told his players that you should watch men Euroleague. Because when you want to know more about basketball, in tactics, in basketball, you, you don't watch uh, NBA, because NBA is all about, you know, individual players who are making a great show and shooting freeze from distance. When you want to yeah, develop yourself as a player, you should watch uh, Euroleague. And <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, because uh, NBA is just much like a one-on-one -on -one and like crazy passes, some dunkings, and that's it, you know. Also, you have different rules, you know, the paint is always empty, you know, that, that guys can beat them and, you know, 
have they can score more points. And so, so yeah, like when you watch that playing like just running or just one on one and that's it, not really they're just like great athletes and you know, good shooters there and I remember when Luca came to the NBA, uh, he shocked the entire, you know, American opinion when he said that it's easier to score in NBA than in the Euroleague. And everyone was like, what this kid is talking about? He is crazy. But when I spoke with like uh, even Bostian or Javon Evans, who played recently for Shlonsk, everybody's saying it's much, much tougher in, in Europe to score. Yeah, everybody's saying that it's easier to score in NBA. You know, just the way of playing and uh, preparing and you know, probably for the game and the taxes here like and uh, I, uh, I don't know about NBA but here teams are more like uh, also focused on defense how to stop some things you know how not some not <laughs> don't let somebody to score if somebody's scoring 30 no we will not let him score 30 you know he will score less than guess us so also that yeah and you uh, now when we don't have uh, Slovenia team in Euroleague you have like your favorite team in Euroleague Or not, not really. I just like or maybe watch, like, players or the the coaches that you like to yeah to watch. I just uh, right now I just watching. There's uh, just you know good teams you know to play you know, two good games. I just want to watch good games right now. You know, I don't have like really my best. Maybe uh, Toby and uh, Summer they're playing in the Euroleague. Maybe those two are. My <laughs> and did you watch uh, Anvil game this season before uh, signing contract? I watch uh, this year actually not really. I just uh, follow the how they're doing in the, because I'm following on Instagram. I think so. This uh, is not the, yeah. you know, the games. I didn't watch games, just results. And I watched uh, also when they were playing in the finals so last year. I watched that game. So I was in Japan. I was like already in the. I have to like forward back to watch it, but I did it. You know, because it was mid of the night. <laughs> so we are still like, if you still have something like uh, supporters' uh, feelings in you, when, even when you are not playing for the club, like you said, when Avil, you still, uh, still are uh, Avil fan. Yeah, Avil? of course. I, I was played there. I left my uh, my t- uh, my time myself. I was helping the club, so I. Want them to do, do good, you know. Still, when I left, at least you know, they also want them the best, you know, for every club uh, I played for. And now, after you, yeah, you came back, you played two games, in uh, two. yeah, two games, two games. Uh, but after this will be published, you will play, for example, three or four. I don't know, but uh, n- uh, never mind. Uh, now, when you are f- yeah, seeing from inside. And what, in your opinion, makes uh, uh, Anvil so good this season that they are on the f- top place? They only get lose one or lose. Uh, I think the players here are like really good guys, and we also have like 12 players that can rotate and play. So I think that's like our biggest threat is like we have like long bench to you know a lot of good players that can step in and show up in any moment. So that's really like good to have. Yeah. Also, we like playing defense <laughs> and playing tough. We have like also like tall players, so it's difficult to pass sometimes or something. So yeah. And coming to the end, uh, what we can expect from the Slovenian national team this season? Because there's no like new face who just instantly became a will became a starter of the team. You have like the team that plays with themselves over many years like you okay there is not dragic but there is a don't you there's a chanchar uh, prepelic yeah, uh, chanchar is i think it's still injured you know after she, the, d- i don't know he will play and also muric is still is he's still injured you know he's so you don't, you don't think injured. they will g- i i don't know muric probably but he was he will not play for whole season so you don't know in, uh, how, what kind of shape he will be and also chanchar uh, injured himself like last uh, summer in uh, a friendly game against uh, Greece so uh, again he's like recovered like for one year and it's still not gonna be tough so for us without two like also in the World Cup was like tough without them but you know we showed that we we can play uh, also the young guys that uh, were there they did, did their job and you know hoping for the best for this time and you see like the young uh, players Slovenian players who in your opinion can became next big star of the Slovenian basket? 
I don't know. For, I think for the a long time will be Luca. <laughs> so no, but I'm you will ask him. Uh, you need to ask somebody else. You know, <laughs> after a couple of years, who do you think? <laughs> so there's no like the young players, junior who like next Luca Doncic, for example. You don't see. There's like only one Michael Jordan, only one Luca Doncic, only one Jokic. So yeah. the next one uh, will need will be his own. You know, and only one yeah. Gadimis and one, yeah. and. Uh, Maybe it's a question not related so much to, to to the basketball in your career, but when you think about your long career, I don't know if you reach, uh, you are closer to retirement or closer to you know <laughs> beginning of your career. But a part of this, what is the biggest lessons the basketball career gave you? The biggest lesson, no. Nothing. <laughs> just not. Uh, I was just like, you know, that you need to, you know, work hard if you want to uh, accomplish something, and you know, need to be dedicated to your work. You know, like show every time, every day. It's a lot of sacrifices, but in the end, you know, brings results. And uh, if you had the chance to speak with like a younger version of Giga, who just uh, received the first call up to the national teams, national team, uh, what advice you would give to him? Stay in school. <laughs> 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 uh, kidding, kidding. I don't know. Just you know, be yourself. Do the best you can, and uh, don't get mad uh, if like things don't go your well uh, your way because. You know, if you will work hard and you should be focused on your goal, you know, and in the end everything is gonna work out. And a part of uh, staying healthy uh, to you, to to your family, what I can wish to you? And, uh, nothing else, you know. The health is the only thing that matters at the end. You know, it's not, you don't have health, you don't have nothing. Okay, Jiga, so big thanks for uh, having time for me. Big thanks for joining my podcast. It's a great pleasure that uh, I had the chance to speak with you. No, talk not only about Luka Doncic. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I wish you all the best and uh, in this season and this, uh, in national team uh, season because we played we Poland and Slovenia played in different Olympic tournaments. So yeah, you're lucky this year, huh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. After, you know, Kaunas tournament, I like the fact that we don't play the same tournament. So big thanks and I wish you all the best. Thank you.